Hi, listeners. Welcome to the She Speaks Life podcast, a weekly encouragement where we share our God stories. I'm your host, Jamie Elizabeth, and I am so glad you are spending time with us today to listen. Hi, everyone. Welcome to She Speaks Life podcast. I am thrilled today. I have a guest on here. Her name is Keegan Hayden. Hi, Keegan. How are you? Great. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you so much for coming on here to share your testimony, your God's story. Just to let the listeners know that Keegan and I met through a group that Beth Moore put together called Lit, and it was for speakers and writers who felt like we were called by God in, in those two areas. And so Beth Moore put together this little conference down in Houston, Texas. We met through the private Facebook group with that, and we kind of went back and forth with conversations over our Facebook group. Keegan was just so generous in wanting to share from her heart her story and how God showed up in her life. She's a speaker and writer as well and a cheer coach. Do you want to just share a a little more about yourself, Keegan, and then go ahead and roll right into your God story? Hey, Jamie, thanks for asking me to do this. My husband and I, we live in Texas, kind of the very tip top of Texas. We've been married for six years and I'm a teacher right now. I teach English, which I know is everybody's favorite subject, Mm -hmm. awesome, right? But I'm also working on writing a book and I'm a a speaker as well and I actually do some cheer coaching along with my teaching duties and I love that they definitely keep me on my toes for sure. But all of that has just been in and of itself a thing that God has provided each opportunity for me in order to glorify him best in that. And people always ask me like, how did you get to where you are? And the reality is it hasn't been easy. I don't think anybody could say that it was easy to get to where they are. Mm -hmm. Um, I grew up in a very loving Christian home and I was taught the word and uh, my parents just didn't shove me off on the church. They said, hey, it's our job to disciple you. It's our job to make sure you know who Jesus is and that you love him. And so that's what they did. They didn't get it right all the time, but that is part of the way that God was glorified through them because he covered their mess ups. And that was incredible. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up in the church and I was incredibly involved in the youth group and I was on the leadership team with the youth group and so I was going to all of these retreats and these conferences and all of that kind of stuff and I got to this point my sophomore and junior year of college where I was like man all of these speakers that I'm hearing they've been involved in drugs or they've been involved in abortions or they've been involved in all of this crazy stuff that just I couldn't wrap my mind around and they were just by my standards of sin they were messed up and God just kind of put people in their lives through the local church that met them there and allowed God to use them to help them change their lives 180 degrees and then he put them in a place where he could share that and those are incredible things but I got to thinking that's not my story and because that's not my story then am I really a Christian especially because I was saved at such a young age and I just started really doubting like could that be that maybe I wasn't a Christian because I didn't have all of this heartache and this pain and this straying incredibly far. Well, over the course of the next couple of years, the Lord just really started working on my heart and helping me to see that sometimes what the Lord saves us from is ourselves. Sin is sin, regardless of whether or not we were always drunk or if we got involved in drugs or if we got involved in sex or whatever the case may be. I mean, I started thinking, okay, they sin, I sin. Like, there's really no difference in us. What defines how bad I thought it was and what society was telling me. And the reality is, God says, sin is sin. It's enough to separate you from Christ. It's enough to send you to hell, regardless of whether it's a lie or drugs or sex or whatever the case may be. And so I would just realize, like, God can use my testimony for people that don't have that same testimony. And so... I was encouraged by that, and I started kind of having some confidence in that, and I got, because I 
pretty confident in who the Lord had created me to be and my purpose that I could still reach people for His glory, I got kind of complacent. And my senior year of high school, I dated a guy that I definitely should not have dated. And I just took him at his word that, yes, he was a Christian, because obviously every good Christian girl says, hey, that's my main priority. Let's check and be sure. So I said, hey, are you a believer? And he said, yeah. And I was like, okay, great. So we started dating. And the reality of it was he went to church. He was not being transformed by the Spirit. He was not growing in his faith. And to be real honest, if I was to step back and look at it right now, he probably wasn't a believer. The truth of the matter was he went to church and that was good enough for him. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the more time we spent together, the more I allowed him to kind of manipulate me and to feed me these lies. And because I had become complacent and I wasn't spending time in the Word and I had made this guy my idol, Mm -hmm. I allowed things to happen in our relationship that I definitely should not have allowed. And so after about eight months of us dating, I went to a church camp that was a leadership camp. And I remember one of the times that I have heard the Lord just almost audibly speak to me that he was, he was saying to me, this needs to be done. You need to be out. We are done with this phase of your life. And he was calling me back to himself. And so I picked up the phone and I, I called this guy and I told him, hey, I just really feel like we're done. And I knew it was cruddy to do it over the phone instead of in person, but I, I really felt like I couldn't wait. Well, he had such a hold on me that I allowed him to manipulate me and I put it off and I said, okay, I guess that can wait. Mm-hmm. And I, in my mind, I don't remember if I said it out loud, but in my mind, I remember thinking, okay, well, screw God, like screw that call that he has made on my life. I'll, I'll get back to it later. And I was devastated by that, that that would be my heart. But when you are in the pit of all of the lies and all of the junk that Satan brings you into, it distorts your perception, it distorts your thinking, and you're like, well, it's not that bad, and so I should just go ahead and I I should go with this. So about another month went by, and I kept just really wrestling with the Lord, like, Lord, let me just continue to live like this. And he's like, I have better for you. I have better for you. Mm -hmm. And so I broke up with this guy and I kind of moved on. And shortly after that, I met probably like two months later, I met the guy who would eventually become my husband, but I did not know that at the time. And I spent a lot of time running from him (laughs) and I, I spent a lot of time running from the guy who would become my husband as well as that was also running from the Lord because he was calling me into that relationship because that is the good thing that he had for me and he was teaching me so much in that relationship. But the trick with that is it scared me. Mm -hmm. It scared me to step into what the Lord had for me because it was these big, crazy things that I couldn't even imagine. I was 18. How could I think, like, this is the guy that I'm going to marry? That seemed incredibly foreign and incredibly countercultural to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know, I know people have gotten married that young, and it has worked out, and that's been great, but that terrified me, because I was still just a baby in my eyes, right? Oh, Sometimes yeah. I still yeah. feel like that, like I'm looking for who the adult in the room is, and oh, that's me. Yeah, um, I met my husband, but, It was we. I was 15 when I met him, and started dating at 16, got married at 20. <laughs> so yeah. our wedding picture, I got a baby face. He's got a baby face. I'm going, wow, this is really amazing. But yeah, if if that's your soulmate, then God's going to have his way, right? <laughs> he is. And he, he kept making sure that I knew that. Mm-hmm. Um, my husband, Levi, kept pursuing me and pursuing me. And he was one of the, he, he was probably the person that taught me to guard my heart because one of the struggles I had coming out of that toxic relationship was that Not that I was looking for value in relationships, but I liked having that control. I liked being able to say, oh, he likes me and I can make him do kind of whatever I want to. Mm. Um, I liked liked being in control. And that's one of the things that the Lord was trying to break me of. That's one of the things that he was trying to get a hold of my heart and allow me to see that when I allow him to do his job, things are so much better 
than I could possibly even try to make them happen. And so what happened was I broke up with that guy and I started going to the collegiate ministry on our campus and I met my husband and I met some other really incredibly good friends and I sat under the teaching of Buddy Young who is an incredible man of God who just taught me really how to understand the word and figure out what it was really saying to us and study God's word and know it's not so much about the knowledge that we have but it's about the relationship that we have and when we have the knowledge it gives us a deeper understanding of just how much God truly does love us and what he really is trying to tell us rather than just taking it at surface level Mm -hmm. and so I went through four years of college and throughout the course of those four years I had kind of forgotten about that guy and I started kind of doing my own thing and stepping into what I felt like the Lord had for me which ended up in me working at the collegiate ministry and discipling young girls and mentoring them in the course of that time my husband and I actually got married and shortly after we got married I remember thinking I never intended to go into this marriage with baggage from the past not that I had necessarily had sex outside of marriage but I had allowed boundaries to be crossed that took away some of those things that should have been just for my husband. I allowed some emotion to be taken away. I allowed some manipulation to happen that should have been reserved completely for my husband. And I think purity is kind of one of those obscure things. As long as I don't have sex outside of marriage, I'm good. And it's so much deeper than that. But that's something for another day. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I remember thinking shortly after we got married, I never intended for it to be this way. And I started just carrying all this guilt and all this shame about if I was a Christian then, how could I have allowed that to happen? How could I have said that that was okay? If I was really a Christian, how could I say, no, God, I'm not going to do that right now, even though I know for a fact you want me to. Mm -hmm. And so I really spent some time struggling with that and struggling with the fact Even as Christians, we still mess up, and we have this standard set for ourselves that I have to act this way, I have to be this certain way, and that's incredibly legalistic. And Mm -hmm. um, as I started realizing what the Word had to say, because my husband spoke those things over me when I would share them with him, he said, look, it's not any different. How How can a Christian lie? If we have these standards for ourselves, How can a Christian lie? It's not any different than that. Mm -hmm. What's different is the way that you feel about it because of what we have been taught growing up, that there are these levels of sin, and that's not the case. And so that kind of helped me for a couple of months kind of walk in truth and walk in freedom. And my boss, Buddy Young, at the Collegiate Ministry had me reading through this book called The Cross-Centered Life, and it talked about how our emotions, they need to be rooted in truth. Mm -hmm. And the only way that we're going to do that is when we spend time in the Word and in the truth, because our emotions, if they're not rooted in truth, they can be liars. And that's what was going on. Mm -hmm. And I just really felt like this is a thing that I need to hang on to. And that I could kind of get over that. Well, my husband and I moved to pursue some careers, and as we did that, we were kind of isolated from some of our poor people that kept us grounded and kept us pointed towards the truth, and some of our family and all of those kinds of things. And one day I was sitting in our room while drying my hair, and this thought just popped into my head, and it took me all the way back to all of that stuff, and it led me into this kind of depression this sort of Mm. guilt and shame and I felt incredibly crazy and I think it was some circumstances that were going on elsewhere but I just kept trying to like crawl out of it on my own I kept trying to say okay like if I can do this then it'll go away or if I can just not think about it then it'll go away or if I can just not if I can just forgive myself then it'll go away but that took two and a half years to yeah. get completely over. Yeah, because you're relying on your own strength. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and that's exactly it, is I was relying on me trying to do it all. Mm-hmm. And over the course of those two and a half years, my husband just kept speaking life over me and pointing me back to the truth. And that is one of the greatest gifts that the Lord has ever given me. And in the midst of that, I was having doubts of my salvation. But I remember vividly, like, the Lord 
answering prayers that I knew only I was praying because I hadn't told anybody else about them. Mm -hmm. And I remember him being more visible than I had ever seen him Mm -hmm. because he was saying, I'm here. I've got you. Just trust me with this. Just, just come back to me. Just, just trust me. Just let me do what I do. And so Mm -hmm. over the course of those two and a half years, we ended up moving back to where we had come from and and where we had met and moving back home and we had bought a house and we had decided that we weren't going to teach for at least a year because we were hurt and we were burned out and we just needed to do something else and so we took a leap of faith and we moved back home and some of that depression was still hanging on and some of that doubt and uncertainty was still hanging on and I, I can't even tell you how it happened or anything like that but I remember just being in tears just crying harder than I had probably ever cried before I opened my Bible and I found the first Peter 5 6 through 11 and it says humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God so at the proper time he may exalt you and I was like okay I know where this is going it's the verse about cast all your cares on him okay so I kept reading Mm -hmm. verse 7 cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you and so I'm like okay I get that but in that moment it struck me anew and it says humble yourself would you put away your pride Keegan would you let me do my job Mm, and get out of the way Mm -hmm. and I was like okay well you've got my attention now and it says under the mighty hand of God God's hands are so much more mighty than anything we can ever ever hope to be anything we ever hope to accomplish pales in comparison to what he can do Mm -hmm. without even trying that's right and so I was like okay so there we go and at the proper time he may exalt you okay I'm not done yet I'm teaching you something in this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. And so I keep reading, cast all your cares on him. And it's because he cares for you that he will take care of those. And I'm like, okay, you can be trusted with that. If I will just put myself aside and trust you with it, you're going to take care of it. But he doesn't stop there. In verse 8, it says, be sober-minded and watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour And I just stopped because Mm -hmm. I knew, oh, my goodness, that's what's been going on. Mm -hmm. Like, the enemy has been preying on the places that I give him. If I am wearing my armor, if I am standing up for what the Lord has for me and I'm rooting myself in truth and I'm arming myself with the Word of God and I'm putting on all of this armor of God that I am told to put on, then I'm going to be able to see when the devil is near. I'm going to be able to withstand those attacks. And guess what? It's not on my own because it's the armor of God. That's right. It is the armor that he literally takes off and puts on us. That's right. And says, my child, I've worn this. It works. Mm-hmm. It is for you. Yeah. And it is him fighting for us, essentially. So and good. so I'm like, oh, okay, I get that. So I was like, okay, God, so like when that's on, what do what do I do then? And it says, resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. And so I was like, Mm -hmm. okay, so I'm going to resist him. But I can't do that, obviously. I've been trying to for however long and if we go back to dating this guy like I tried to resist him but it didn't work because I wasn't standing firm in my faith it's not just about resisting it's about standing firm in our faith and standing firm in the truth of God's word so good and and so I was like okay great and I felt in those moments the depression like my husband didn't really understand what I had gone through he just knew like my job is to point you to Christ And he didn't really understand the toll that it had taken on me to be that incredibly just distraught over guilt and all of that kind of stuff because he's a guy and he doesn't carry emotions like women do. Um, And so I'm like, okay, he, he doesn't really get it. And it says, just know that the same kind of suffering, the same kind of trial, the same kind of heartbreak that is going on with you, you are not the only one. You 
you are not alone. Mm -hmm. There are people who have gone through what you have gone through. I was like, okay, okay, God, like, at least I know I'm not alone. That gives me some comfort, even if it feels like I'm alone. Like I said earlier, when we root ourselves in truth, it can guide our emotions. And regardless of how we feel, the truth is I wasn't alone. Yeah. And God was walking right through it with me. As if that's not enough, we have to know sometimes that there are other people who have felt crazy, who have felt depressed, who have gone through these same kind of questions, but we just don't talk about it. And so it says, after you have suffered a little while. So we have this certain time that we have to suffer, and we have to go through these things. And it made a little while is a pretty relative term especially in our time, because I'm like, okay, a little while, that's like two hours of evening. <laughs> yeah. But God says sometimes, in the grand scheme of eternity, a little while is years. Yeah, yeah. And we have to be okay with that, mm -hmm. because God is doing a work in us. That's right. And then the very next thing it says is that it will be for His glory, and He will restore you. He will bring back who you were meant to be because of the work he is doing in you. It may not look the same as who you were before, mm -hmm. but you are a new creation anyway. And so he's going to restore that relationship. He's going to restore you to himself mm -hmm. as well as he's going to confirm who you are in him. He's going to confirm, Hey, you're not in this alone. He's going to strengthen you by his strength, not by anything of us. And he's going to establish you in the way that he wants you to go. Proverbs and Psalm talk about that so often. And then it just says, okay. And so for that, we glorify him. And for days and days and days and weeks and months, I just prayed that over and over and over. And that led me out of that depression. That led me out of some of that guilt and some of that shame. And that's not to say that it doesn't creep back up because the enemy now knows that's a weak spot. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is strengthening me in that, and He's establishing me in that. And one of the ways that He did that was during the course of all of that, we got involved in a church, and I decided, hey, I need to mentor this girl, and I need to disciple her. And about three months into meeting with her, she said, hey, I'm having these thoughts. And she didn't really know her purpose, and she didn't really know why she was um, kind of around and, and what her point of life was, not that she was sad or depressed, but she didn't really necessarily know, like, what the point of her living was. Mm -hmm. And so I got to share that with her and say, I've been there. I had these questions that nobody talks about. And I'm going to tell you, like, I learned it the hard way, and here's what I know. And I gave her some resources, and then I said, talk to me each week about this is what I'm learning this week. This is what I'm learning today. This is how I feel today. And through the course of that, she, I was able to see the Lord do a work in her that allowed her to step out and be a leader and be selected to the honor leadership team that is taking applicants from nationwide to lead out in um, a youth conference. And awesome. so I was able to see that. And that was an incredible, incredible thing. But throughout the course of that, I learned there are so many struggles that I was going through that it would have been really easy for the enemy to take hold. It stemmed from, yes, all of this guilt and all of this shame, but anytime something would crop up, we had a, a scare that I might have thyroid cancer and we had to move and we had to figure out what we were going to do with all of these jobs. And I just felt like this really heavy burden of, of struggle. And then we decided that we would like to have we would like to start trying to have a child, and we went through that for 18 months, and, and we couldn't do that, and we found out that I was pregnant, and all of that was the Lord saying, do you not remember who I am? In the midst of all of these struggles, if you will just trust me, if you will just say, look, I'm, I'm giving you these struggles, but I have a purpose in it. I have a purpose to establish you and to strengthen you and to restore you to myself and to use you to help other people know that I can handle all of your burdens and all of your anxieties. Mm -hmm. If you will just spend time in the Word, if you will pray, if you will, for me, it was write truth on sticky notes from the Word, and they're all over my bathroom door, and those were our prayers every morning. Mm -hmm. 
we would get up and, and walk through the door to get ready and when we were leaving and all of those things, we would see truth and we would root ourselves in truth and know like all of these struggles that we're facing, regardless of where they ultimately stem from, God is still good and mm-hmm. God has a purpose to restore us to him. He continually pursues us. And so, no, it's not about us feeling like we're saved. It's not about us feeling like we're good enough. It's not about us feeling a certain way. What it's about is knowing we are not alone and the Lord fights for us. Mm -hmm. And when he is glorified through us, the things that he does in our lives is so much more incredible than we could ever imagine. And so from that, I've been given the opportunity to be a mother and to share my story and to say to, to people, look, I know that it hurts right now. And I know, I know that it feels yucky, but you don't have to walk through this alone. And I've seen people delivered from um, sadness and heartbreak and, and all of these things that society says that we should just buck up and, and go with, like, you're okay. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And I've been able to hear the Lord and see the Lord do some incredible things in the lives of some of my students and some of my cheerleaders and all of those kinds of things because of what I had to go through. And I'm able to minister to them in ways that I wouldn't have been otherwise, even though I wasn't a drug addict, even though I wasn't caught up in this life of sex and adultery and all of these kinds of things. God still uses us in the midst of that and and we don't have to diminish our our stories because it doesn't look like somebody else's Mm, so good he has a purpose for all of them Mm -hmm, that's right yeah and i love that you are pouring into these cheerleaders who are right at that stage of um, maybe holding on that guilt or shame or doubt that is the time in the teen years where they really start to question, what is my purpose? And I love how God had taken you through that so you know what it takes to get there where you can release that and have true freedom that God wants us to have. And therefore, going through it, you're able to pour out to the cheerleaders, to the young girls that you're discipling and teaching and you know being a mentor really to these kids and also you know sin is sin in God's eyes so realizing that that even though my sin is different than that person's sin in the world's eyes in God's eyes it's it sends a sin he he just looks at it all right it's just the same right. so and through Jesus Christ we're saved and it's not death it's life when we believe that right. Jesus is our savior so so good Keegan I love it Thank hey, yeah the the Lord is just he just shown me over the course of of all of these years that I still need a savior even though I wasn't any of those things I can't do it on my own and even when I try to control these things we saw we see where that got me and and when I just hand it over to God like that's the whole point if I could do it on my own I wouldn't need a savior but guess what I definitely do yeah I definitely do yeah we yeah we all do and that and I keep thinking surrender when we need to give over our control to God it's basically surrender which equals obedience and just making that choice in our mind to just completely take it over to him and it's not just a one-time thing like we have to constantly tell ourselves God, I'm surrendering this to you. I'm surrendering this to you and doing it over and over again until it starts to become a little more natural to us where we're like, okay, God's in control over this, you know, but then it may be something else in your life, right? Where you got to give it over again and again. So he wants us totally dependent on him because he has that best plan for our life. I mean, it's not a bunch of rules and regulations. It's him knowing, hey, look, I want you to live in an abundance, a fulfilled life. I have the best, not just good, not just mediocre, but I have the best for you. So 
Yeah. Gosh, I just love the story that you have. So just a, a short takeaway for the listeners. You know, I, I would just say you can't do it on your own. And the only way that we can remind ourselves of that constantly is to cling to the Lord. And the most tangible way of that is relying on His Word. That's, mm-hmm. that's ultimately what brought me out of the pit mm-hmm. and out of the lies of the enemy. Is just cling to His Word and realize you can't do it. You yeah. have to have a Savior. Yeah, yeah. we got to rely on His strength and His power, not by our own, right? And really... Right. That's awesome for us. It really releases a lot of burden. We just need to like let go, right? <laughs> and just go, okay, right. God, you take if the only wheel. It was so easy. Yeah, yeah. If only it was so easy to do that. Exactly, exactly. It's simple. It's just not easy all the time. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Keegan. You are a gift to this ministry, sharing the light, being the salt of the earth, and giving hope to everyone that's listening. I just thank you so much for having that willing heart to come on here and share your God story. Well, thanks for having me, Jamie. I really appreciate the opportunity to share what the Lord is just doing in my life. Yeah. It's awesome. He's definitely got big plans for you. Thanks. Okay, bye. Thank you so much for listening today. I trust that God has encouraged you through this message. For more information on this ministry and to access free downloads, please visit my website at jamieelizabeth.com and sign up. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Jamie Elizabeth She Speaks Life. That's J A Y M E Elizabeth She Speaks Life. Until next time, my friends, I pray God reveals Himself through your own life story.